Gracias. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today on this new GeneXus webinar. GeneXus 16 new features, how to use the new import from Sketch functionality by Gonzalo Echagüe and Mauro Canciani. Gonzalo Echagüe is a solution specialist at GeneXus. He has been working since 1992 with GeneXus, developing web and mobile applications. Mauro Canciani is UX designer and developer with almost 20 years of experience developing interactive applications, web, mobile, augmented reality, and wearables. Mauro currently leads the design team at GeneXus. At this time, I now present to you Gonzalo and Mauro. Hi, everyone. Hi everybody. This is Gonzalo. And uh, we will start with the presentation. So, Sketch. Why we have an import from a Sketch? The first thing that we would like to mention is that we created a tool that allowed to import from a sketch, in this case, uh, because we want the designers, when they create the design systems in the tool that they are using, be, uh, to have a way to import this design system inside GeneXus. So these tools allows the import from a sketch sketch of a design system. A lot of the elements of the design system will be imported inside GeneXus, helping the definition of the applications using a design system. And why a sketch? That's because a sketch has more than 1 million designers, paying designers using the tool. Most of the important customers that they have, like Apple, Google, Facebook, are using Sketch. And this happens because Sketch was the first tool especially created for designers uh, with less complicated uh, tools or features than Photoshop, for example. Also, Sketch has an upper format. When you create a project in a Sketch, you can access the content of the Sketch file that is a uh, that they have a lot of JSON with the information of how the, the sketch design was done. Obviously, you have binaries also for the images and so on. We can see in this graphic the number of preference for sketch. Uh, also, there is a Figma. This is a new tool for designer that is full web. It also have a Windows uh, version, I guess. And then it's Adobe XD. The difference between Sketch, Figma, and Adobe, more than the special features that they have for the designer, is also the way that there are um, the, the, the subscriptions. Uh, Sketch is only for Mac, and there is no free uh, version. You need to pay. Uh, the personal version is, I guess, is ten dollars. Figma has a, um, a free version, and then you can upgrade to paid versions, and the same as about XD. So we have this import tool from Sketch in GeneXus available since uh, GeneXus sixteen U five for smart devices. And we are working in the GeneXus trunk version in the beta uh, for uh, to import the sketch definition for web. And these are available if you download the trunk uh, version, so you can test also for web. Let's going to see how it works the integration with GeneXus. When we import from a sketch we have uh, three steps to import the definition of the design system in a sketch. The first one is the sketch import that is marked with the arrow. 
And after the import of the sketch is done, we must import also the fonts and the images that will complete all the elements that are needed to uh, fully to have the fully interface defined the design system defined in the sketch into Genexus. When we when the import of these uh, objects are completed, the result inside the Genexus KB is the definition of several objects. We are going. I'm uh, sorry. The import will define panels by web panels and SD, SD panels. Also, we'll code inside the panels in the events for the navigation when we go from one panel to another. So, Genexus uh, will define this the, the call to, to, uh, to allow these navigations. They are going to be created stencils for the reuse. We will see later how we do this. Also, the sim is defined. If we ask uh, in the, during the import dialogue to create a new one, the, the, the sim is created. Images, fonts, and also the test data uh, objects that are created in data provider. Uh, because not only the panels are imported, also the um, elements of the data that was created in a sketch are imported inside Genexus as static data. This is because we create a data provider with the static definition of the data. So when we import, when we do the, this import, for example, in this case is a mobile application that is a food truck application. The element that you see in the grid for the burger fries or lollipop pallets and so on, these are part of a data provider that load this static data. And basically, after the import, we should, in this case, that we were going to see in the demo now, we should have these five panels uh, created after the import of Genexus using all of these elements that were defined in the sketch file as a design system. We have a lo logo, uh, grids, all with the same uh, look, look and feel. The buttons have also a specific uh, class for this. And also all of this information of this element that compound the design system should be inside the KB after the import. So let's try. Now I will go to Genexus. So now can you see Genexus on the screen, right? No. No. Okay, let me come back. Now can we see Genexus? Yes. Okay. So we have this KB and we are going to start from scratch. I, I just defined the KB in order for to, to accelerate the definition of the KB, but nothing else. Here in the tools, we select the application integration option and sketch import. In this case, but we can select from here the sketch project. And also we can select the theme that is going to be added, okay, in this case. And we select as an output of the integration, we'll uh, create the images and also a menu, okay, it's going to be created after the import. So if I press okay here, we should see that Genexus is doing the import from the sketch project. Now you can see that are creating the panels in the output. And well, it looked like it finished without any error, any warning here. And here we can see that the panels were created. We have five panels and also the menu. 
we can see also that the objects, the data provider objects that provide the uh, static data for these panels were created. And also the stencils that are the reusing elements that were created uh, from the design system of from a sketch. Okay. So all of, all of these objects were created here. And now we are going to finish the import steps. We need to import the fonts. I will be selecting where the fonts are and I will select the sim. And finally, we are going to import the images. So this is the folder where are present the images. So we finished the necessary step in order to have all the sketch project imported inside GeneXus. And now we are going to run, okay? So if I go to preference here for the smart devices, I will, in this case, I will select iOS. I need to change here for my Mac. I will select the emulator and with this information should be enough in order to run the main program. The main program is this one, the food track menu. I will set as a startup object and I will run. Okay, just let me check about my network connection here. Okay. So now Genexus should specify and generate all the programs for this just created KB with the imported that were imported from the sketch and to run this main menu or the dashboard that is very simple because only have the five uh, panels. Now it's trying to connect with the Mac. Copy the project. And I will change to emulator here. uploading the application and now you can see that the design that we have created in a sketch okay was reflected here in GeneXus in or in, in the application in several screens okay as you can see here there are the data for the this grid I have the board the burger the lolly the sweet baker all of this was created automatically with the import, all the panels. And we didn't need to program the Nginx of this. But let me show you something about how we can change from the static data that we are using from these data providers 
to change it to dynamic data. What we are going to do in this case is connect to a table that I already have created in one of the several databases that I have and get the data from the product table from this external database. So how we do this? These panels, uh, I'm sorry, this data provider here is, are the one that gave us the data, okay? This, in particular this one, the grid product, you can see here that it uh, provides the data for this panel, for, for, sorry, sorry, for this panel here, the stripped chocolate. So we are going to change this. How we do? Well, let's go into database reverse engineering. Everybody knows this. I will connect to this database, the cinema. Then I have one table, this is the pro table. I will say that import. I need to change something here. Okay. Um, I will let me add the rule here. I will rename the product as the product food. And um, I will add the data store. I will provide, I will change this one here. Now I say cinema pro. And finish. So now we should have here the pro food um, data view and the transaction pro food. We check that is using the cinema data store, that is the one that will define it here. And now we are going to change this data provider to get data in dynamically from this table. What we do here is to check, I'm sorry, to remove this part of the data provider and instead of using this static data, I will use the product image attribute. Here is the description, or the name in this case. And just changing this, I modify from the static data to dynamic data. If I do a little here, I will ask to get the database. because it must do a reorganization, but it's not going to perform the reorganization because it is a data view. So just continue. And after we have generated the food truck menu, we can see how it takes the data from the this table and not anymore from the state the static uh, from the data provider. It's using the data provider, but in this case, uh, from the table. Okay, and if I run here. Now, if we go to the third one, now you see that we are, have another products here. There's regular Coke, Max and Emmons. That's the way that we change the data provider to get dynamic data. Well, this is basically the demo that we want to show to how to import 
a design system from a sketch and generate application with GeneXus and also use dynamic data instead of static data as is provided by default in the import. Now we come back to the presentation. Now Ma Mauro will talk about something related for the design. Great. So I think you need to stop sharing your... Right. Yes, I already finished. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Are you seeing my screen right, screen right now? Yeah, we can. Great. So today, I would like to share with you some recommendations and, and best practices for when you are designing a, in Sketch with the import of, of GeneXus in mind. So first of, all, first of all, I would like to share some general recommendations about how you design inside, GeneX, inside Sketch for GeneXus. First of all, um, it's very, really important that you keep your design uh, simple. Um, what I mean by that is not just your design, but the way you, you structure your design inside Sketch. Uh, let's see a, a, a little example. For, for example, in this card, uh, it's important that you can put the, the, the elements that, that are at the same part of the screen inside a folder. For example, here I have this background, white background, and the title, this little pill, one divider, uh, description, well, the information about quantity and price and the button and the white background. Everything is inside a, a folder. This is important so Genexo can understand better the, the, the design. And try to keep every element in order. So in order that appear from top to bottom. For example, here I have the um, the title, then I have the pill and the blue line, the description, etc. And when you have uh, elements in in horizontal order, try to uh, group them also. So it's better for Genexus to understand this. So I have one group. Then if I enter, I have another group. Everything inside, and then another group for this part of the, of the screen. Um, and it's, it's really important that you have the, the 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 background at the bottom of the of the of the um, folder. Another important thing to have in mind is that it's really important that you name things uh, meaningfully. I mean, uh, for example, here the the name of the artboard is something that is going to be important in Kinexus, and the developer will use then to make this dynamic. So, for example, here, this is a capture from Gonzalo's demo right now. And you can see that the price is OK, then the product description is OK, the product name is OK, but the image, uh, I have a four here, that the name of the image was the real name of the image. And then for the developer, this doesn't make any sense. So try to keep your, your naming uh, Tidy. Maybe you can have a chat with you, with the developer so you can agree together the, the naming. So in that way, the, the, the life of the developer would be better. It's really important that you name, um, especially when the design, the, the elements are going to be uh, dynamic. Another important thing to have in mind is that it's important that you don't overlap things that don't necessarily been overlapped. For example, here, this um, a text frame could be overlapping this this, this other, other one. And this is a problem, problem when we try to understand in Kinexus what is going on here. So try to keep the, um, the frames not overlapping 
one uh, 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 over each other. Another important thing is here that when you are trying to put a text element that, that are going to be dynamic, that, that you keep space for this text to grow because this is going to be dynamic. So if you put the test field in that way, when this get the real text at, at, in real time, it's going to happen something like this. So you want to try to keep it here so you define also the margins and give it space to, to, to grow. Then let's move, let's move to images. When you are working to, with images, you are going to have two kinds, two different kinds of images. First, you are, you are going to have these kind of images that are uh, static images. This is going to be static, nothing is, is not going to change in, in, in runtime. So for those image, images, you need to export the images in every res resolution and density that um, you need to display in good quality in, in different kind of de devices. Uh, it's really quick, it's really it is easy in, in Sketch to export those images. You just, just have to select it and then make, make exportable here. And we are using a Android convention. So I, I think maybe you can use, uh, use both iOS and Android, but I always use Android because it has more, more densities. You have to do this um, step for every image that is static. And then you, you should export every image here. Go export, select everything you want to export, export. And then this is the folder that you have to send to your developer to have all those images. This applies to these kind of images, maybe this background, everything that is not going to change dynamically uh, in runtime. The second type of images is our images that are going to change, so dynamic images. For example, this one that, that is going to be uh, replaced with the real product in real time, in, in runtime. For those images, you don't have to do anything, just give it that, that way. Genex uh, um, will import them as sample data, but in runtime, they, will, they are going to be replaced by, by the final images. Another important thing with images is, is try to avoid mask images. Um, when you are designing, designing in a sketch, uh, multiple times you just grab an image, draw a rectangle because you want you want to use it that way, and then mask, mask, mask it and use it. Try to avoid that because uh, it's difficult to access to re recreate these mask images. Although we support rounded uh, masks for images, like for example, that, this one right here. In the future, we're going to expand to all kinds of, of masks, but right now, try to avoid, avoid masks. Another thing that uh, like images you have to send you to, to your developer are fonts. Right now, is there is no uh, a way to quickly and effectively uh, export fonts from your sketch uh, design. So right now you have to collect them by hand, put them in a folder and send it to, to the developer. Um, from the developer perspective, it's really easy to, to integrate with them in the Nexus. It's just a couple of clicks and you have it in your theme. As Gonzalo was saying, uh, when you import a design in Genexus, uh, Genexus keep the navigation between panels. So those orange lines here represent the navigation between panels. So you can select one item, for example, this one, and just press W um, here, and you can connect panel to another panel, and this is on orange in the Nexus. Skits have something called symbols, like this one that you see before. 
those are um, reusable elements that you can design once and then instance in your design and override the content like this one. This element, this and this, all are, are the same symbol and you, in, in, you change the content just to represent the, the content here. You integrate this into Nexus, this map exactly when, with uh, stencils in Nexus. So all those symbols are going to be uh, represented as stencils in, in, in Nexus. We honor all the overrides to represent the different elements and overwrite of text and also overwrite of images. In Sketch, you can override also styles here, and you can over, uh, text styles, and you can override um, layer styles. Those styles we are not supporting right now in Gen So if I change something here, the, for example, the um, this style of the well here I don't have style. I think I don't have style. If I change the style here, it won't be represented in Gen one thing I forget about uh, images that it's important that you send to the developer all the images in all the states. For example, here we have a heart that is used like in, in the press or select state. So you have to send them both states, right? Okay, then we have a few conventions that you must follow to have some elements imported right in GeneXus. For example, if you want to import that button and that GeneXus understand that it is a button, we have a convention that the element, right now, for example, for, for example this symbol, uh, it's a button. It's just like a drawing of a rectangle and a text. But we add the, the word button in the name and GeneXus will uh, understand this as a button. So he will assign the action in the in the, pro in the program to navigate between the panels, etc. Another convention, convention we have is, for, for example, for grids. By now, this is a grid, like the one you the one you saw was that one here. A grid is just a folder, as you, as you can see here. It's a folder with a repetitive, repetitive uh, sy symbol inside, right here. Those are the symbols. And if you name the folder starting with grid, that's, that's Nexus will, will understand that this is a grid. So it's going to throw away all, all these symbols. I just, just keep one to define the, the layout and use the data here in the other symbols to, to, to create the, the data set sample for, for represent the, the content of the, of the grid. And this, the same is for input text. If you want to have an input text, you can, for example, draw a little rectangle. You can have a text in here, this one, maybe a little icon here. You group of this and just name it starting with uh, input and something. And this is something that is going to be represented in GeneXus with the input text control. Okay, and finally, something really important is that to have this responsive, because uh, this is going to live uh, in runtime inside different kind of devices, we honor all the responsiveness that you can define in uh, in a sketch right now. For example, here I have a component that is just designed, but I don't define any um, constraints on anything here. So if I stretch it here, you see what happened that some we don't respect the margins and the images with another proportion. So to make it responsive, you have to set up constraints here with this tool in, in, in Sketch. For example, I want uh, the image to be fixed in size. Maybe this um, is going to be fixed on both sides. This one I like to move to the right. And inside this group, maybe the text uh, fix, uh, fix it to the left, to the right, and both 
text here, something like that. Let me see. And this image fixes something like that. So when these have a responsive, um, it's going to be behavior like the way we want it. I have some problem with this. There you are. So keep in mind that you have to set up all these constraints in order to have the, the perfect responsive in your final uh, application. Uh, for, for this, you, you can follow sketch constraints best practices. I am going to give you a link in the chat, but in the chat in the in the in the meeting. Uh, so up to there, those are the, the recommendations I would like to show you today. But I'm going to show you something that we are working right now to accelerate the, the cycle between designers and, and, and developers. Right now, if you want to import one file, sketch file into your, your sketch, uh, into your Nexus, you have to have the, the, the sketch file and the fonts and the, and the images. We are working in a plugin that you can install in, in sketch. So you can send to a serv service your, your design and this service is going to process, import, and run, and generate the applications. And, and it's going to give you back a QR code so you can test your, your design in your iPhone or in your Android phone. This is going to, is going to speed up really your, your process as a designer so you can design and test re really quick in that way. We have planned to, to liberate this plugin in anytime soon. So for more info, information about how to import a sketch file in Genexus, you can, you can see the, the, the page in our wiki. Uh, I, I'm going to paste uh, th this link also in the, in the chat. Great, so now we are going to go back to, to Gonzalo to finish the, the presentation. Gonzalo? So can you listen to me now? Are you there, Gonzalo? Yep. Can you listen to me, Mauro? Yes, yes. OK. OK, so uh, this slide it was was Mauro talking about, the different uh, things to take into account when you are using a sketch and for to import later into GeneXus. Um, Mauro was also talking about the, some of the next steps that we are uh, going to. Um, we are uh, now in 2020, we want to finish the sketch import tool as we have been working now. Okay, At this time, we are just in the initialization of the sketch. We cannot update yet. The tool that Mauro just uh, shown us is uh, in order to allow the developer to upload the sketch design to a KB and test using the KB navigator until it get the final design. And when this design is uh, import or sent to the to the developer, uh, you can initialize the design with this. We um, our aim is to work in the update also, okay? But this is going to be during the 2020. And after this, we would like to add Adobe XD uh, to get more designers uh, into um, into the design system definition of Genexus. Um, we recommend very much this uh, talk of um, Juan that was in the Genexus 29th uh, user conference. So you can attend this uh, 
talked is very, very good about design system and design ops. And well, now um, we are open for the questions. Great, we have the first question. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is what I just uh, talked about. That uh, um, right now the tool allows to initialize. Okay, but we cannot do the the update yet. Um, we can uh, in the beta version we have an option that you can define the panels as stencils, and so all the panels that you import from the sketch could work as an stencil. In this case, you can. Um, you can update, okay, but you need to define the panels that are going to have the, the stencils, okay. So we are still working on it. Mauro? Yes. We don't have any date of release right now. So can I import any sketch of Genexus, for example, this one? Uh, Okay, uh, well, the th theoretical answer is yes, but no. <laughs> um, for now, uh, we can um, support really complex files or files that use uh, external libraries or files that anidate uh, symbols in many levels. Or, so we have many li limitations for, for the files that you can import. So for now, the, 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 the safest way is to draw your your own files following all the, the best practices that we have right now. Uh, we hope that in the future, yes, you, you, you are going to be able to import anything you want. But right now, we have many, many limitations that uh, files that the one you are sharing that I suppose that is a complex one uh, probably fail. Is there another question? <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. So if you have no more question, you can contact us anyway in the email that we left in the latest slide. Anytime, Mauro and I. Sure. we have no more questions so thank you Gonzalo and Mauro for the excellent presentation thanks to everyone for your participation uh, just a final reminder the recording of this webinar will be available on the Genexus webinar site and on our YouTube channel remember to check our next Genexus webinars and uh, go and see the ones that you missed all content is free and 100% online I hope to see you again next time